Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jen Messina and I'm a registered dietitian and I focus on working with kids and families on helping to support a healthy relationship with food. So let's talk about how nutrition and how the social environment affects a child's brain development and the importance of the first thousand days. So what is the first thousand days? The first thousand days of a child's life starts at conception and actually works through to the first two years of life. This is a critical period in their life where their brain is growing rapidly, where they're learning constantly, and they're developing the physical, mental, and emotional rate faster than any other time of their life. So as care providers, we're actually laying the foundation for their life as they get older and into adulthood. Nerves are growing and connecting, synapses are firing, and they're starting to develop systems such as learning, memory, attention, and the ability to control impulses and mood and multitask and plan. So this is a very key time in a child's life where they are rapidly developing. So how can we as care providers help mold and shape the environment as best as we can to help lay that positive foundation? So children really respond well to a practice known as responsive feeding. So responsive feeding recognizes that Feeding is not just for nutrition, but is also for emotional support and connection between the care provider and the child. So really we're listening to the baby or young child's cues in terms of when are they hungry and when are they full. So typically you'll see a child's readiness to eat, opening the mouth, eyes following along with the spoon or with the bottle, uh, leaning in, that sort of thing. So we're really listening to their cues. And when the child is saying that they've had enough, we're again, not trying to force in an extra kind of couple spoons. We're really listening to what they're telling us through their body language and responding accordingly. So when we talk about which foods are best, what I want to encourage you here, rather than focus on very specific micronutrient requirements, which, which, you know, can be overwhelming. We really want to focus on variety. So trying to offer as many different types of foods in that early period of life as possible. So generally we recommend trying to serve about three food groups with meals and about two food groups with snacks. And again, lots and lots of exposure, serving foods in different ways, roasting them, or, you know, steaming them or baking them or however you like to cook them, but serving them in multiple different styles and also trying to serve things um, over and over again. If that's a food your family eats, I want you to keep serving it because we know that it can take between 15 to 25 food exposures before a child may put that food in their mouth. This is also a key opportunity to help decrease picky eating later in life because the more familiar kids are with a variety of foods, the later in life, we won't have as many challenges. If we've only offered, you know, 10 different foods, those are the kids that tend to be more picky later on in life. So when we talk about which foods are best, a couple things come to mind. The first is iron rich foods. So we know that babies iron stores actually deplete by age six months. So we want to help replenish those stores by using some high iron food. So of course, things if they're doing still um, formula feeding, that's going to have a lot of iron in it. But also things like meats, beans, lentils, or bean based pastas, fortified cereals, I like to use those in pasta or sorry, in pancakes or mini muffins or waffles. Anytime you can use some infant cereal in your cooking, that's actually going to be good for the whole family. And the other thing is a lot of families don't include dark green vegetables. When we look at research, that's one of the foods that's least commonly incorporated. So how can you incorporate that? Maybe it's putting, making a smoothie and putting a bit of spinach in there, or maybe it's cooking up some kale or some broccoli or things like that. So making sure that you're including some of those foods um, in their diet is actually gonna help increase their tolerance to those foods, but also add a bit of iron too. We also know for brain development, omega-3 foods are key. So how can you incorporate things like salmon, even if it's canned salmon, herring, trout into their, into their meals? So a lot of times I'll encourage families, can we add a little bit of salmon to some pasta, put it on toast, make some fish sticks, um, or including some of those plant-based options. So ground hemp, um, ground walnuts, flaxseed is another great option. Children also really need vitamin D, so and adults too, for that matter. Um, so we know that kids up to 12 months, right now we're recommending 400 international units. And after age one, we want about 600 international units. 
The other thing to note here is that while infant formula is going to have, like if you're doing, say your family is vegetarian or vegan and you're doing a plant-based formula, that's encouraged till age two, but plant-based milks are not encouraged until age two. And that's because plant-based milks don't have the amount of fat or protein that regular milk has. So if your family that wants to only serve plant-based, I highly encourage you to use your plant-based formula up until age two and not switch them to an oat or soy or anything like that. Let's talk a little bit about how to feed. So brain development, like I said, the synapses are firing, rapid brain growth. We really want them to use all of their senses. So talking about the food, even though kids can't respond at this age, they're learning from your tone, from your eyes, from your connection. So including them in meals and snacks, trying to have family meals as much as possible. Children are still learning from you and learning about food acceptance, even if they're not necessarily able to communicate that. So the more that you can eat together, the better, rather than serving baby first in their high chair and then you eating separately. Um, we tend to see children have more food acceptance if they're brought to the table. So regular meals and snacks, letting them explore, letting them put it on their face and smell it and taste it, even if not a lot actually gets in their mouth, we really want them to be using all of their senses and talk, talk, talk as much as you can, describing the food, talking about what you're doing um, really helps children learn from their care providers. So thank you so much for your time today. And hopefully this has shed a little bit of light on how important those first thousand days are. Have a great day.